The Redmi K30 is a unique phone. In certain ways, like say with the display, the refresh rate, it's doubled since the K20. So it is a step forward, but in other ways, it's also a step backwards. For example, we've moved from Super AMOLED to IPS LCD and gone the full screen panel with the pop-up camera from the K20 and that's been replaced by a punch hole cam instead. Okay, now we've got two cameras, but still you get what I'm saying. The frame too, it's plastic now instead of metal. So you get the rough idea. Now, despite all of this, the K30, it's a very interesting phone. Why? That's because Redmi have priced it quite aggressively. It comes in at a much lower price point than what the K20 did. And now that I've spent about two weeks with this as my primary smartphone, this is the video where I sum up my thoughts on it. Is the K30 a worthy successor to the K20? Or have Redmi cut one corner too many? Let's find out. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case you've stopped paying attention after that long drawn intro, my name's Ash, you're watching C4 Retech. And if you do end up liking what you see, please don't forget to turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Starting with the build, Redmi have used Gorilla Glass to the front and back, but where they've cut back is with the frame. Like I mentioned earlier, it's not metal like on the K20 anymore, instead they've gone for a plastic frame this time. The thickness, it's remained unchanged, which is quite impressive considering that Redmi have managed to increase the battery capacity by 12.5%. To the back, Redmi have this circle around the camera, under the right light, it gives off an almost 3D-ish effect. And it does feel unique, yeah, I'll give Redmi that. There are shades of Huawei, but it's still fairly new. Uh, but I do have kind of mixed feelings about this one. Now, when Redmi came out of the K20 and the K20 Pro last year, the design was uniquely Redmi. We'd never seen anything quite like that Aura Glow design on those phones. And that helped them stand out in a crowd, catch attention, turn heads. The K20 series didn't feel or even look like phones that someone would pick up just because they were priced aggressively. In fact, the build on those phones screamed premium. But here with the K30, we are back squarely in Redmi territory. The build is nice and all, but it's nothing truly special. The unique selling point with this phone, it's back to pricing. I'm not taking anything away from the looks. It's a cool design and all. The build is functional, effective even. But at the end of the day, it doesn't have that oomph or that wow factor that the K20 did. So when we draw parallels with its predecessor, we're kind of left disappointed. The comparison to the predecessor goes one step further when we turn things around to the front. The displays, it's grown now, it's 6.67 inches, but it isn't all screen anymore. We've got this punch hole up top, which at first glance looks pill shaped like the one on the Galaxy S10 Plus, but it's not. There are actually two punch holes here where the pixels in between blacked out via software. And this is IPS LCD, so the blackout, it isn't totally black and the backlight makes it visible under dark conditions. I thought that would bother me, but turns out it didn't. Even the punch holes here, they didn't really bother me during my time with the K30. I got quite used to them quick, so I'm not gonna call that a negative. But did I miss AMOLED from the K20? Now, that is a complicated question. Since it's not just simply AMOLED or LCD here, it's also 60Hz versus 120Hz. So let's take a little detour, because I can't really talk about the refresh rate without talking about the specs. And what we have here is the Snapdragon 730G chip inside. So the 730G, it's a minor upgrade from the Snapdragon 730 on the K20. CPU wise, nothing's really changed. It's still the two uh, Cryo 470 Gold and six Cryo 470 Silver cores, same clock speeds and all, the GPU, that's also the same, it's the Adreno 618, but that one's clocked higher, so the GPU performance, it's 15% faster. Now the 730G, uh, is it enough to handle twice the refresh rate? That was the question on my mind going into this review. The answer to it, yes and no. Okay, let me explain. From a user interface perspective, with day-to-day -day use, is the K30 as smooth as something like say the ROG Phone 2? No, and us expecting it to be as smooth as the ROG Phone 2 is not realistic. 
Because hey, that's a flagship phone with the 855 Plus and it costs like two and a half times more than the K30. The main difference here would have to be the consistency. I mean, the K30, it still runs smoother than phones with a 60 hertz panel, but once in a while we'd encounter a few drop frames and micro stutters. It wasn't bad enough to put me off from using the phone, but it happened enough times that it was definitely noticeable. It's just the 730G not being able to catch up with what's happening with the display. Uh, and that means frames do get skipped at times. It's a minor inconvenience. It's not the end of the world, but it is one worth mentioning. Now on the software side of things, we have MIUI 11 based on Android 10. It's MIUI, so it's snappy. Most of the apps, they open up quick, whether it's jumping between two apps or scrolling through social media, you don't really feel like anything is slow. I mean, you do miss frames, yes, but it isn't a slow phone. And missing frames is what happens when you have a Snapdragon 730G pushing a 120 hertz panel. Now, from a gaming perspective, which is where this high refresh rate display comes, in, comes into its own, we did test out multiple games which support 120 hertz. And yes, the 730G was actually able to push more frames. The games felt smoother than usual. We were able to hit the flick shots way easier in games like uh, Modern Combat Versus. The touch sensitivity was good and the controls felt tight. Especially games like Mortal Kombat 11 that rely a lot on quick action events. Uh, we felt the K30 does better than most. After micro stutters in the user interface, I kind of went into gaming expecting the 120 hertz not to really make a major difference, but we were pleasantly surprised. Uh, with gaming, yes, the 120 hertz panel here, it does make quite a bit of difference. Now back to my original question, did I miss the full screen AMOLED panel? Yes, I did. But the refresh rate here did make up for it. The 120Hz panel here made for an enjoyable overall experience. And I'm happy with Redmi's decision to go with a high refresh rate screen. One of the side effects of doing away with AMOLED though, is Redmi having to move this fingerprint sensor to the side. Since with an LCD panel, they can't put it under the display anymore. Now, I'm not a fan of the positioning. So for most of my time with the K30, I didn't even use it because I went with the super fast face unlock. In the few instances where I had to fall back on it though, say when the room was too dark, the fingerprint sensor was fast and accurate. So from a hardware perspective, no complaints here. Now let me take a moment to address the sundries. The IR blaster has been retained. We have FM radio support, NFC is also present, but will it make its way over to the Indian variant if when it launches? Only time will tell. For audio, the single downwards firing speaker here sounds about middling. Not too loud, but adequate. The output via the 3.5mm headphone jack was good. Uh, cellular reception, call quality, no issues. Now one change I really like with the K30 is that Redmi has brought back the microSD. It is not a dedicated slot, but hey, the option is at least there. As far as RAM and internal storage go, we've got 664, 6128, 8128, and 8256. And the storage here is UFS 2.1. With regards to battery, there's a 4500 milliamp hour battery here and despite having the display at 120 hertz throughout my time with this phone, with moderate use, I was easily able to get through a day on a single charge. I'd end my days with 20 to 30 percent juice left. And now even if you do end up running out of juice, there's an included 27 watt fast charger and that gets the phone from 0 to 100 in a little over an hour and that's impressive for a 4500 milliamp hour battery. Now, circling back to the display and uh, specs for a minute, uh, yes, Redmi could have paired this display with a more capable SoC, and that would have probably made for a more fluid and complete experience, but that would have also driven up the costs, which is probably they went with uh, the 730G. Now, the 730G here does manage to deliver where it matters the most with gaming, and the user experience is quite good too. The display it's pretty good. It does really well with the contrast and colors. There's support for HDR10. The viewing angles are excellent and I never had trouble viewing what's on screen even when I was shooting images under really harsh sunlight. So overall, I'd say good job Redmi. Now talking about shooting images, uh, the camera is also a major selling point of this phone. The primary sensor here is Sony's all new 64 megapixel IMX686 and it comes paired with the f1.9 lens. In our testing, this sensor managed to capture sharp images with good dynamic range. Is it a drastic improvement over that IMX586 that everybody loved and we saw on a lot of phones? 
I wouldn't say so, but it's still an improvement nonetheless. And the primary camera's performance on the K30, it was quite good. Now, under low light, the camera continues to impress. The dedicated night mode here helps. The images, they turned out clean. So this is a camera that you're gonna be happy with. The next sensor on the list is an 8 megapixel sensor with an f2.2 lens. This is an ultra wide. It seems to do a great job. Images here, as you can see, they are rich with good amounts of detail. The dynamic range, considering it's an ultra wide, it's pretty decent. The third one, it's a 2 megapixel macro sensor, and this is the one that let me down. Uh, I couldn't, I mean, given the loose uh, standards that we have for macro sensors, it still felt like a letdown. The K30 disappointed. I, I kind of think Redmi have tried to differentiate between the 5 megapixel macro sensor on the 5G version and the 4G variant's 2 megapixel sensor, and the K30 has ended up getting the short end of the stick. Now the final sensor, it's another 2 megapixel sensor uh, and this time it's for depth detection, it helps with portrait shots like these. The edge detection here is on point and of course since it is the 686 that's actually uh, shooting these images, the final picture, it comes out looking great, good details, nice skin tones. Uh, you can also adjust the background blur and there are multiple options to play around with. When it comes to selfies, we've got a 20 megapixel sensor with a f2.2 lens. So seems like the same one from the K20. It's paired with a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Crisp looking shots with great dynamic range. Really impressed with the selfies here. Even the portraits, they have great edge reduction. So I guess the depth sensor, it does come in handy. From a video standpoint, the max we can do is 4K 30. And there is electronic stabilization at this resolution too. The footage, so it ended up being stable and it was also crisp. Dynamic range, not as good as with stills, but still quite decent. Auto exposure kind of did struggle a bit. Overall, good looking footage though. And the selfie camera seems to have electronic stabilization too. So what's my final verdict on the cameras? The primary, that's definitely an improvement from the K20, but they have cut down on the telephoto lens and instead we have a depth sensor. Now the telephoto was able to do edge deduction just fine, get good portraits. So I think that cutting that out affects the reach of the camera, what the camera can actually do, the setup, the camera setup can actually do. The macro sensor, that's just here to increase the overall sensor count. Overall, the same story as the screen, uh, a little bit forward, a little bit back. So anyway, let's now talk price. The K30, it starts at 1599 yuan in China, that converts to about 16,000 rupees. Now the K20, it launched at about 1999 yuan or 20,000 rupees. In India, they ended up launching it at 22,000 rupees. So it seems like, yes, they've taken a few steps back. But when the K20 came out, a lot of us were unhappy with the pricing and consumers wished the K20 was priced lower. So this seems like a logical change from Redmi and they haven't really compromised on the important aspects of the phone. Would I have liked to see a 765G here? Probably, but all things taken into account, the 730G, it's performed quite well. The K30 isn't as flashy or as cool as the K20. It doesn't have an AMOLED panel or a pop-up camera or that cool notification light on the pop-up camera. But what it does have are the basics of a very well-balanced phone. Fast internals, great cameras, good battery life, and an interesting display. All wrapped up in a glass sandwich design that you'd be hard-pressed to call anything but pretty. So if Redmi does manage to launch the K30 in India at anywhere around the 16, 17,000 rupee mark, it should be a great buy, one I think you should most definitely consider buying. So that's my take on the Redmi K30. Now I want to know what you guys think. Also, this review is a little bit longer than my re regular reviews. So let me know what you felt about that. Do you feel the more in-depth review is something you'd like to see? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Also. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching c 4 Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye. And hey, the giveaway is still running. So if you've not entered yet, there's a link in the description below. So you can go ahead, enter the giveaway.